latitudes and their giant cows in the north. Fresh milk production not even mentioned in the farthest south in the Mediterranean mentioned, but again it's for infants. And in the north, yes, and it's abundant, it's four rivers of milk. And if you look at who's drinking it, no one's drinking it in the south. Infants only are drinking it in the Mediterranean, and adults, gods and giants, are drinking it in the north. Is this accidental? Could be. Could it be guided by some sort of a selective process? Well, what I think we have here is another wonderful case of a fit with Girard, Odin and his brothers, Romulus and Remus. There are many tales of rivalry of the dual mediation of the Girardian mimesis. Surrogate deflection, Adhumla is sacrificed, just to take that particular case. Um, it's a sacrificial bovine, but it clearly uh, resolves uh, the tension between the brothers. It's portrayed as the beginning of the earth, not just of um, religion, but all of life, of the planet as we know it. So it's a very foundational, it's the beginning of all things, including religion. But it's more than Girard, if you ask me, or at least it's different in a sense, that there's a latitudinal gradient not expected from Girard. What causes that? What causes this myth to show these inflections to be appropriate to those latitudes? Now this is where I come in with some thoughts about coevolution. The idea of coevolution is that we have two distinct but interacting systems of inheritance in humanity, the genetic and the cultural, that they're separate, they're distinct. They have different mechanisms of change prevailing in each of the two tracks, including natural selection working on the genes. The possibility of natural selection working in culture has been pointed to by many, um, in, including Paul this morning talked about it. Uh, I'm dubious that natural selection, that is to say preservation by actual survival and reproduction, has much to do with culture, but try and tell that to a Mormon. Um, uh, they think that there's a lot going on with that, and it's hard to disagree, but I think it's not a general process for culture. Um, that something is causing adaptive cultural patterns. Something is causing both the regularities of the Girardian mimesis and some adaptive cultural patterns. What tailors cultural variation to locality? Some process. I think, and as Paul referred to this morning, we can think of culture as a kind of a Darwinian population. Some process causing the differential persistence of cultural variation for new ideas, new beliefs, new forms, new rituals, new myths. And um, so you can represent it as a kind of a black box problem or a white box problem where you've got variable entities coming in and as time goes along you have uh, different results coming out depending on where you are. So I would say that the myth of the first sacrifice went in, there was a lot of variation introduced, a lot of experience whether you were in the south or the north, and depending on where you lived, out came specific variants later. Something is causing the differential persistence of forms that are more suitable for those northern latitude areas where the bovines are female, where the milk is produced in quantity, and where the culture heroes are drinking it, encouraging others to drink milk uh, as befits the adaptation. Now, it could be natural selection via survival and reproduction, or it could be other things. What might those other things be? Well, if we really portray the dual inheritance or the coevolutionary model, sometimes we call it dual inheritance, sometimes we call it coevolutionary, we've got the genetic track of inheritance, which is a population of genetic variants, a Darwinian population of genetic variants going along through time, uh, instructing features of human populations, and now we're going to add a track for cultural inheritance, that the ideas, values, and beliefs in people's heads are a parallel kind of inheritance system, not subject in the same way to natural selection, or at least not automatically, subject to things that cause differential repetition, differential um, replication of ideas in people's heads over time. So we're going to think of the culture as a population of cultural variants, a Darwinian population in Godfrey Smith's terms, and we're just going to ask what are the processes now in, in both of these. What causes a delta G, the change in genetic inheritance between generations, and what causes a delta C?